Order members, Mr. Keir MacArthur has given notice of an urgent or question uh, to the Minister of Health, Social Services and Public Safety. And before I ask the clerk to read the question, I would remind members that if they wish to ask a supplementary question, they should rise continually in their place. And I found some difficulty with members at question time rising continually in their place. They seem to believe if the chair looks down at them, that should be enough. Members need to rise continually in their place, irrespective of what area of the chamber I may look at. Our members. So I'm just reminding members of what they should be doing to try and get in on a contribution. The member who tabled the question will be called automatically to ask supplementary, and then I will call other members who are on their feet to ask to supplementary, and of course, very much take account of the balance of parties within the chamber. And if that is clear, I would ask the clerk to please read the question. To ask the Minister of Health, Social Services and Public Safety to report on the outcome of the judicial review regarding his ban on blood donation by gay men. The Minister. Minister. There is no ban on blood donation by gay men per se. The lifetime ban is based on sexual behaviour, not sexual orientation. In the application for judicial review in this matter, the judge took the view that it was unlikely that there was bias on my part. The judge has ruled that the decision whether to maintain the lifetime ban is a matter for the Secretary of State for Health, acting as a competent authority for the whole UK. The Secretary of State for Health will need to consider the ruling. The judge also ruled that this was a reserve matter by virtue of Section 24.1 of the Northern Ireland Act 1998. The judge also took the view that the matter was controversial and cross-cutting and should therefore have been referred to the Executive for consideration. Contrary to inaccurate commentary, the judge did not take the view that maintaining a higher threshold in Northern Ireland itself was Wensbury and Rational. He did, however, find that Northern Ireland continuing to import tiny quantities of blood from Great Britain, which could potentially contain some MSM blood in this context, was irrational. This finding needs to be viewed in context, in light of the very small amounts of blood that we import and what this represents in terms of additional risk for recipients of blood in Northern Ireland. I am considering the full judgment and its implications. For the present, the lifetime deferral on men who have sex with men, donating blood remains in place in Northern Ireland. My priority as Health Minister is the safety of blood, continuity in the supply of safe blood and public confidence in the safety of blood. Ian McCarthy for supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The words irrational uh, against the ministerial court were used at the judgment. Surely the minister, our minister, will acknowledge this is a very serious case of discrimination against a section of our population. Will the minister now apologise? Will he lift the ban and stop taking idiotic judicial challenges, costing order, large order, sums order, of money order, that he order, knows order, he cannot order, win? Order. order. Can we have the question from the member? Not further statements. Will the Minister give the Assembly, this Assembly and indeed the Northern Irish people an assurance that he is approaching all social issues on a rational, objective and evidence-based manner rather than imposing his own personal religious views on others? Surely, Mr Speaker, if the decision on the blood ban is today a matter for Jeremy Hunt across the water, then why, why was it not the case last week? Uh, member, or Mr. Speaker, I, I will respond to the speech uh, by Mr. McCarthy. I'm not sure what questions were actually in there, uh, but I will quote uh, from the judge because I doubt if the member has read the report so, or, or read the, the ruling. So, so I will. I will. I will, I will order, 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 answer, order. I will assist him, Mr. Speaker, by reading the ruling to him. I, I, order, I, order. I, I, item 136. Given these two options, and considering the reported difference in infection rates above, there are two reasonable responses, and the one selected by the Minister is not <coughs> Wensbury unreasonable on these grounds. So let's just deal with this issue. In a very calm and a very dignified way, that commentary that was put out this morning is wrong. That commentary that has been put out by other members in this House 
is wrong. And the irrationality that the minister or that the judge was applying was the fact that we took any blood from UK with the possibility that it could contain MSM blood. So I didn't go far enough for the judge. If I had actually banned blood coming in from GB, the judge would have found the decision rational. So perhaps the member would do himself a favour before he asks a question by actually reading the judgment and then he might understand the question that somebody's asked him to put in. Order, Maeve McLaughlin. And lots of questions to the Minister, not further statements. Colonel Elgott, uh, and as somebody who has read the judgment, um, can I say that the following the Minister's statement an hour ago, or, or just over an hour ago, that the issue is now effectively in the hands of Jeremy Hunt, and the fact that whether it's a tiny piece of blood or a large supply of blood, the decision was found to be irrational, and it was found to be in breach of your ministerial code. Will you now, directly, Minister, join with the rest of us and the rest of society in ensuring and supporting that the ban is lifted. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, again, it would appear the member might have read it, but she clearly doesn't understand it because the judge has taken that decision out of my hands and indicates that that is a decision for the United Kingdom minister, the United Kingdom that, that uh, Sinn Féin are very happy to belong to in this instance and they want to defer to the British Minister to make the decision because they don't trust, they don't trust uh, someone from Northern Ireland uh, to actually ca carry it out. You know, in, in dealing with this issue, Mr Speaker, um, of prejudice, you know, I, I, and, and Ms Rihanna just claimed that, that, that I'm prejudiced. The same uh, legislation applies that applies currently in Northern Ireland, that applies today in Northern Ireland. The same legislation applies in the USA, Canada, Singapore, Hong Kong, Germany, France, Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Denmark. So I pose a question. There are, uh, there, there are the vast majority of countries, the vast majority of countries, Mr. Speaker, apply this. So are all of these people prejudiced? Or is the question that is being posed by others that I am prejudiced just a stupid one? Yeah. Jim Wells, once again, members must rise in their place. I don't know what I need to do to get members to continue to, to rise in their place. Mr. Wells. The, uh, the minister has read a list of uh, modern uh, democracies where there's a ban on this particular form of blood being used. Could he outline what contact he's had with the authorities in the Irish Republic who have a similar uh, view on this matter? And it isn't ironical that the members opposite are asking us to, to ignore the views of those in the Irish Republic but accept the views of the rest of the UK. <laughs> so, so, so shortly after this issue came up, Mr Speaker, I did write to the Minister in the Irish Republic the Minister of the Irish Republic uh, indicated that their position was the same as ours. Oh. It was their intention uh, to maintain that position and that they weren't uh, going to give it consideration oh. to change it. So, so in, this instance, in, this instance, in this instance, Mr. Speaker, Sinn Féin or anything but a United Ireland Party. Michael McKinney, order, order, order. Mr. Speaker. Order, number must be heard, order. Mr Speaker, thank you. Uh, given the judgment and the Minister's subsequent statement, he has been asked to apologise to the House. Will he now take the opportunity to do so? I think uh, that I have dealt with a number of the issues um, that people have raised and a number of the nonsensical issues that members have raised and the inaccuracy of, of information that members have been putting, putting out. So perhaps it's for those members who have been putting out inaccurate information to the public to apologise to the House. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mr. Banks. In order to address public concern that the Minister may be allowing his, public view, his personal views to cloud scientific advice, will he publish the legal advice that the Attorney General gave him prior to losing the court case? Well, in terms of this, let's be quite frank about it. This is not an issue of religiosity or moral views 
This is an issue of public safety. Indeed, uh, the learned judge identified that it was an issue of public safety. And again, I would encourage people to actually read the judgment. Because in Article 131, he says, the learned judge, it is clear from the SABTO report that anal, oral, male homosexual acts do increase the risk of acquiring blood-borne disease. For example, in relation to HIV, the report notes at page 68 in Appendix 5, UAPMP data from 2008 for previously undiagnosed HIV infections showed that the prevalence was higher in MSM, 3.1%, compared with heterosexual attendees at 0.35%. That, members, is a 900% increase in infection rates. Now, some members may want to dismiss this. Some members may want to ignore safety issues. But I am responsible for people's health and well-being. And for people to receive blood, they need to be ensured that that blood is safe. He goes on to say in Article 132, uh, and I, I'm glad to be of assistance to members in reading this to them. Later on the same page, it continues to note that Gay Men's Sexual Health Survey notes that the prevalence of HIV between 86 and 13.7%, which are much higher percentages than in other populations which were tested. I rest my case. John McAllister. Mr. McAllister. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, the, the judge stated that the minister's decision and actions were irrational and that he broke the ministerial code. Uh, does the minister think that that's an endorsement of a, his policy? And does he feel that the endorsement of that policy, which it now turns out, Mr. Speaker, he didn't have the power to make? <laughs> well, uh, I thought we were going now to the, the Minister for Scotland or Wales, and, and the judge is very clearly disagreeing with the Department of Health on this issue, and that is a matter for um, <coughs> others as to how they might wish to respond, because there certainly is constitutional issues arise. In terms of breaking the ministerial code, uh, I certainly, if I did it, I did it unwittingly. But I suspect that every other minister in this House has unwittingly breaking, broken the code if it is as designated by Lord Justice Tracy in this instance. Let's be absolutely clear and unequivocal about it. I believe that, for example, whenever Alex Atwood didn't want to bring BMAP before the executive, that that would quite clearly have broken the code. I look at uh, issues in front of Mr O'Dowd currently, common funding formula, Dixon plan. Those would be issues that under this ruling would very clearly break the ministerial code unless it was brought to the executive first. I think of the issue of, for That's example, not the the when order. Minister Ford wanted to change uh, the, 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 the insignia on the Northern Ireland prison service, which our First Minister intervened to stop happening, that would have been a breach of the ministerial code. So there is numerous breaches of ministerial code, according to this judgment, that has already applied. And this is something which has come as news to us in terms of what the judge believes to be the appropriate ministerial code. Anna Lowe. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Would the minister now leave behind his religious dogma and act in the best interest yeah, yeah. of our society, yeah, yeah. and that is to increase the volume of blood donated for all our patients? Yeah. I'm not sure whether <clears throat> the member has ever met anyone who has received something in good faith and it has went wrong. One of our um, representatives at one point passed away very sadly as a consequence of a health intervention that took place, but by receiving uh, material that was contaminated in this instance. So let's be very, very clear that we're here to look after people's health care and we want to do that as safely as possible. And if the member hadn't been listening to what the judge had actually quoted in his ruling and to the fact that the judge didn't identify bias, perhaps again she would do herself a favour and go and read the actual judgment that has been passed instead of passing judgment without reading it. Paul Given. Mr. 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 Speaker, uh, can I welcome uh, paragraph 141, which makes it clear 
that there was no discriminatory practice in Northern Ireland as the policy applies to Northern Ireland, and I welcome that. Uh, in paragraph 150 of the judgment, could the Minister make comment in respect of the Ministerial Code uh, that the learned judge indicates that because it generated a lot of publicity, therefore it should have been brought, therefore it should have been brought to the executive? What does that then mean, particularly for the smaller parties in the executive when it comes to how they conduct their business whenever they don't take decisions and retain the status quo? Well, certainly that, that element of the judge, judgment makes it very attractive to us not to challenge it. Uh, it. It may be a very interesting place for smaller parties in the executive uh, thereafter, based on, on the Tracy ruling. I suspect that most of the material that would be on the in-tray will be material uh, that at some point would have to be brought before the executive and therefore the independent decision making that many ministers have applied uh, heretofore may be something uh, which is lost. So I suspect that many of the people who are baying and crowing uh, <coughs> may be the people who have most to lose as a consequence of Lord Justice Tracy's uh, uh, judgment on this issue. Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Would the Minister agree with me that the way to deal with the issue of safe, uh, making sure that our blood um, is safe is screening, not discriminating against our gay community? No, I, I would agree with the, the, the Lord Justice, and, and, and in fact, if he hadn't uh, recommended that Jeremy Hunt had, had to make the decision, I, I could have uh, fulfilled uh, the issue that he thought was irrational quite easily. Uh, so I do intend to agree with the judge as opposed to, to Ms Rianne uh, in this instance. Uh, and I would agree that putting safety right at the top is something that we should always be doing as opposed to be introducing um, some sort of equality agenda over and above the safety of the people that we serve. I, I, I think that it always has to be a priority to have safety first uh, long before we introduce uh, the equality issues. Mr. McRae. Yeah, Mr. Speaker, does the Minister accept or reject the, uh, the um, High Court judge's ruling that his decision was irrational? Does he agree with that or does he reject it? If you don't hear the seventh thing. Well, uh, the, the, the member um, quite clearly isn't challenging the issue that this uh, is irrational on the basis of the decision that was taken. Um, and I'm not sure whether the member actually supports the concept of banning uh, the blood coming in uh, from Britain, because uh, that would be the basis of where the irrational element is. So perhaps the member uh, would be endorsing uh, the banning of blood coming in from Britain because it may contain some MSM blood, because that's what the judge was saying. Order, members, that concludes this.